Hey, hey, glitter friends. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a realistic turquoise tumbler. So let's get started. Today, we're going to start with a 20 ounce straight skinny from Hog, which I have sanded and prepped. So as you can see here, I'm gonna get super technical and find a way to measure my clear cast without having to use a ruler. I'll be honest, I don't math very well, so if I can find a way from using a ruler nine times out of 10, I'm not going to. Once I've measured the height of my tumbler, I'm going to use my tiny but mighty little paper cutter to cut it off to make sure I have super even lines, which will be very helpful for our next steps. I'm probably the definition of what you could call a clear cast hoarder, so I'm definitely going to set this piece aside and keep it for another project. I am using the Hidden Gem White Cast Pack from Crafty Thriving LLC today. I'm now going to wrap my clear cast inside out on my cup so I can make another super technical measuring mark. After one more slice through my paper cutter, we are ready to wrap our clear cast. I'm going to peel back and expose just a bit of the edge of my clear cast here. You know, a lot of people tend to cut this off after they fold it back, but I have a reason for leaving it. Because I'm looking to have my print extend all the way to the top rim of my cup, I'm going to turn it upside down for application. Doing it this way for me makes it easier to make sure I keep my line straight across the rim of my cup. I'll work very carefully on this initial application and make sure it's properly smooth. So if you need to pull it off slightly to make sure that it is on there correctly, go ahead and do that. Once I'm happy with my initial application, I'll flip my cup over and begin to work my print all the way around. By folding my backing instead of cutting it off, in essence, I've created a small tab to be able to pull to help with seamless application. I'll work slowly and evenly around the cup to ensure a lack of air bubbles that I would have to go back and fix after the fact. If you find that you've gotten some even after a carefully applying, no worries. The vinyl scraper and X-Acto knife can take care of those easily. After you've applied a good deal of your print to your cup, you'll notice that you no longer need to pull your backing tab and it will kind of start to roll off on its own, allowing you to use both hands for application. When there's about an inch and a half to two inches left, I'll remove the backing fully and apply the rest manually. Doing it like this affords me a better opportunity to make sure my pattern is aligned just the way I want it. You might have noticed when I was measuring the diameter of my cup that I allowed for a bit of an overlap. For me, it's much easier to cut a bit of excess off rather than having to remove the entire wrap due to it being too short. Here I'm using a bit of painter's tape to make sure my line is straight and to help me while using my X-Acto knife to cut.
I'll also trim any overlap from the top of my cup to ensure a proper epoxy seal at the rim. How little or how much of a stainless steel rim you leave is really personal preference, but it is very important to leave just even a little bit so your epoxy has something to grip to. While alone this is already such a beautiful print, I wanted to add some depth. I'm going to take my Eileen's Tacket over and over in my Taclon brush and begin to add spots around my tumbler. I'll be using my Mr. Nola's Glitter Foil Flakes in the gold color today. make it a bit easier on myself. For a pattern, I'm going to follow along with some of the lighter gold veining that is part of this pattern. I'll begin to apply my adhesive lightly, not very much, a little goes a long way, and I'll start at the top and the bottom working vertically to make sure I don't miss any sections before rotating the cup and moving on. It was about at this moment I realized that my cup cradle was probably going to hinder my progress more than help me, so I picked my cup up, decided to hold it at an angle for easier rotation. I apologize for the possible monotony and length of this section, but I figured if I were going to leave anything in, it was important to show you how I went about picking where I was going to put my gold leaf flakes. I have sped it up for you a bit in hopes that it makes it go a little faster. 
What you see me doing here is lightly patting down any spots of tacket that I might have applied too liberally. This is easily accomplished by simply using a finger to smash that down because you don't want any additional buildup of your gold leaf in spots that are thicker than others. Once you're satisfied with your adhesive coverage, you can set your cup to the side and wait for your tacket to dry. While this doesn't generally take long at all, if you're impatient like me, you can speed this process up by using a heat gun. And now for what I consider to be the fun part. So I'm just going to take clumps of the gold leaf flakes in my hand and begin working up and down to make sure I don't miss any spots of the adhesive since it does dry clear. So maybe you're wondering and worrying that you possibly used too much adhesive and there is too much gold leaf on your cup. Don't worry as when we use rubbing alcohol in our next step that will easily be taken care of. Once you're sure that you've gotten all of your spots of adhesive properly covered with your gold leaf, you're going to work your way around the cup and gently burnish the gold leaf to where it's lying flatly onto your cup. I'm going to go through and dust off any excess and make sure to catch it on my piece of paper so I can reuse it and put it back in its jar. So here's where the magic happens. I'm going to take my 91% alcohol and a folded up paper towel and begin to work my way around the cup, distressing these pieces of gold leaf. I'll vary my pressure depending on the spot to give it a more natural look, so some are heavier and some are lighter.
Once I was happy with the amount of gold leaf I had left on my cup after distressing it, I'm going to take a, another paper towel and I'm going to go around and clean up any gold leaf that might have ended up on my cup in places I didn't necessarily intend for it to be. So normally I obsess over any leftover gold leaf dust that is on my cup, but in this instance I felt like it added a little bit of charm, so I left a lot of it. So you might have been wondering why I left this wide rim at the bottom of my cup. I promise guys it was intentional. I wanted to incorporate a nice gold leaf band on the bottom of my cup, so leaving this space with my print was the best way to go about that. Instead of worrying if my rim was going to be even all the way around, I'm simply just going to follow the bottom white line of this clear cast. I used a thicker piece of painter's tape for this band for two reasons. One, I didn't have to be as careful with where I got my tacket, and two, I'm pretty sure I used the last of the other's painter's tape while painting my daughter's room last week. But hey, I mean, it probably worked out for the best. There was less cleanup for me on the edge because I tend to be a messy crafter, which means less video time for you guys. We're going to repeat the exact same steps as before, using your tacket, letting it dry, and then applying your gold leaf. The only difference is this time, we won't be distressing the leafing after the fact. I'll pull my tape, check for rogue pieces of gold leaf, and make sure my line is even before taking it out to the garage and hitting it with a little bit of matte clear spray paint. Once that's dry, I will put on two more coats of Mr. Nulla's Speed Dry Epoxy before we move on to our very last step. Once your epoxy is nice and dry, you are ready to mattify your cup. Today I am using Final Sand by DIY Epoxy. I know there are several other brands out there, but this is just the one I started with and I'm comfortable with, so that's what we're going to use today. I'll be applying it to our cup with a steel wool pad 
I'm gonna say it's probably a finer grit because you definitely don't want to see any scuff parts when you're done. So I normally do this over my kitchen sink, hence the uh, giant bowl of water. But all in the name of filming, I'm going to do this and record it for you right here at my filming space. I've lightly wet my tumbler down before I just start globbing this stuff on there and kind of smoothing around. Uh, if you aren't doing this at your sink, it is nice to have water on hand because it does dry out pretty quickly. And if you don't re-wet it, you're probably going to go through quite a bit of your tube in one setting. Through all my research, I haven't really been able to find a direct answer on if there is a very specific way you should scrub this on there. So we're just going to go in small round circular motions, making sure I don't miss any spots. So I'm just going to tell it to you straight guys. This is definitely a labor of love and is not the easiest thing in the world to accomplish simply because it takes up a lot of time and apparently a lot of upper arm strength that I didn't realize I was lacking. I always try to pay special close attention to the top and bottom rims when mattifying a tumbler. They tend to be the easiest to miss and you definitely don't want any random shiny spots messing with the overall look of your tumbler when you are finished. I'd say I try to keep my pressure at about medium throughout this process because one, I want to save a little bit of arm strength because it could require several more passes and two, you don't want to cause any damage to your layer of epoxy. Once you feel you have adequately scrubbed your tumbler and you haven't missed any spots, I like to go back and wipe it down really well with a rag and water. This gives me a good way to determine if I've missed any spots or if I need to go back over the tumbler anywhere with an additional pass. Once I'm sure I've gotten all the residual residue off my tumbler, 
I will try to wipe it down really well with a dry paper towel. This will give you a better idea once it's dry if there's any clear spots that need to be mattified for or if you are done with your project. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us today, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube to keep up with all the great content we have coming your way. See you next time. Bye.